G'day guys, Pete and Pete's Tools, great to see you here again, another beautiful day here in paradise. Hey, I did a video the other day about cutting aluminum with a cheap plasma cutter, so I thought I'd do one today and see if we could cut a bit of stainless, stainless steel with the old cheap plasma cutter, see if it works or it doesn't work or whatever. Uh, always remember guys, if you like my video, subscribe, same as usual, drop me a like, drop me a comment, and uh, let's get into it. Hey, the missus said to me the other day, she says, Pete, you need to clean out that bloody workshop of yours, you've got everything in there apart from the kitchen sink. Yeah, look what I found guys. Let's cut this sucker up and see what happens. Hey guys, I've got my stainless kitchen sink and let's see if we can cut it with the old 40 amp plasma cutter. <laughs> Side guys, I'm going to cut a strip of um, stainless out of the top here and we'll see how it cuts. Actually wearing a mask when I'm doing this guys, I don't know if you notice there's a whole lot of fumes coming off this, I don't know whether it's the stainless steel or what the hell it is, but uh, I'm not going to take the risk anyway, so I just put my uh, painting mask on, and I advise if you're having a play like this you do the same thing, because it, um, it was quite fumey actually, so I've got my mask on, and i also got my uh, safety glasses on, because uh, yeah, you don't want to be going injuring yourself, but you know me, safety first Pete, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed guys when I was cutting the stainless, it, uh, it's quite, it seems quite snaggy if you understand what I'm saying. It doesn't run, you think because the steel is really smooth it would just flow straight over the top of it like it does with normal steel. But um, yeah, and I think it's, it's more or less melting it rather than just cutting it if you know what I mean. Uh, anyway, we'll have another. If you guys have been watching my channel, I did one on aluminum as well, cutting aluminum, that's quite surprising as well. A lot of good info from you fellas telling me. I'll put a link in the description below to that one, and you can have a look at that one as well, because it's, uh, it's quite interesting, well I think it is anyway. Especially if you're not technologically minded like I'm not, I'm just the, uh, the old backyard guy, you know how you do it. You just give it a go Pete, give it a go, see what happens. So anyway, like I was say here, it's got a stainless steel, um, what's them call it here, I don't know what they actually call it, some sort of fitting. So uh, what's that? That would be about an inch there, I suppose. So we'll see if we can hack through that and see what happens. And I have to put my mask on and uh, I've got my, uh, I've got my glasses on. Let's get out of it. Wow, what do we learn from that? Whoo, see that's still friggin' burning there. See that doesn't really cut it. It just more or less melts it, if you understand what I'm saying. See all this dross coming off of you. Sparks flying everywhere, not like normal steel. Um, yeah, so. Maybe that's not a good idea, Pete. See that? You, you, you can hack your way through it like that, but it's doesn't look like it's cutting it to me, it looks like it's just burning its way through. Well, right, I turned it over and we'll have a go, cutting it completely off. There we go. See that glowing? See that's holding the heat? It's incredible. 
that's just holding the heat like there's no tomorrow. So what I'll do now is I'll get a uh, piece of mild steel the same diameter as this and then I'll cut it exactly the same. Holy crap, don't knock that on the floor Pete, you're going to set something on fire with. This is even really hot to hold with my gloves, the heat's coming through from the gloves now and um, shit, ouch, change your gloves Pete, put some welding gloves on, might be a good idea. So I changed my gloves to something a bit more conducive to holding a bit of extra heat, uh, but it's really hard to hold this with these big thick gloves on there. See this one here is probably an inch or so in diameter and this one here may even be a little bit more than that. Um, well, it won't be that much more so we'll cut this one, this is mild steel one compared to the stainless steel and we'll see how that goes guys. So we'll uh, have a go cutting the mild steel bar. Here we go. Right, as you can see, that one here holds a bit of heat as well, not nearly as much as the stainless though, and um, although it took me a while to get through it, this is, this is pretty well to the, uh, to the max for a little, um, for the little plasma cutter, that's probably, might be an inch and just over an inch actually, the thickness of this, so uh, yeah, so it definitely cut it better than the, uh, than the stainless. And uh, not so much sparks flying everywhere and um, slag on there as well. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of a little bit of dross on there, but um, nothing too much to worry about. So uh, anyway, I'll cut some thin stuff, the same thickness as that stainless I was cutting, and see if it cuts any better. That definitely cuts a lot better. It's a lot better cut as well. It's not as angry and it's not as horrible. Um, anyway, that's quite interesting really, isn't it? So guys, what's Pete learned today? Pete's learned that if you want to play silly buggers and cut out little faces on your kitchen sink, well then a cheap Chinese platinum cutter is the way to go. If you want to do anything more serious with your stainless steel, like anything, you know, above about a quarter of an inch, I don't really recommend using the plasma cutter. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, maybe you guys can tell me how to do it better. But anyway, that's what I've found out for the day. If you like my video, subscribe, as always, drop me a like, drop me a comment, and we'll see you next time, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.